Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Traders War Room on the 365 Trading Academy channel right here in front of you. I hope you guys can see this. I hope you guys can hear me. This is War Room number 70. We are literally, last week Sunday, there we go here. That was War Room number 69. That's 70 Sundays. I've been doing this for 70 weeks. 70 Sundays, however you think about it, it's over a year of constant dedication to help retail traders trade accurately, you know, the best that they can. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please don't forget to like the channel. Please don't forget to share a video that helps you. But I just want to really emphasize this. This is probably one of my greatest works, okay, not on the channel, right? Something that I would normally reserve for private teaching that I've put out in the public space. Please take the time to watch the scenario analysis video i did on friday we did it before nfp drop look at the accuracy look at the after when nfp fell and try and implement some of the stuff that i taught you in here for your everyday trade all right i'm not going to bring this up again but this is one of it's, it's literally going to go down as one of my, my 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 golden retrievers you know five years down the line on this channel this video will help a lot of people trade correctly right so i hope you guys remember this how today trade euro usd scenario analysis plus smart money concepts that's the title of the video it's the last thing on the channel well you know you know the, that i've uploaded which i did this past friday please 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 check that out anyways welcome once again uh folks to a war room like i said we are going to be looking at a couple of trade ideas today together with you i would like to look at a couple of pairs um uh, we're going to be marking up some swing trading setups and if you want help with day trading setups go watch that video that i just told you about in fact i'm going to put that video right now so you can just right click somewhere right there just right click right click on it okay open new tab and then watch it straight after the the war room all right right click on it open new tab and then watch it straight after the war room. right today i want to look at the dollar just right off the bat and then we're going to look at euro jpy and see where we are with that market. We're going to look at Euro AUD, see where we are there, NZD, USD. And we're going to look at the NASDAQ because you can't do a war room without the NASDAQ. Otherwise, everybody will be messaging me the whole week about the NASDAQ. So, what I like to do now is to just make sure I get it out of the way so that I don't have to be bombarded with personal messages. We're going to, um, I need us to start looking at other indices, other company indices. And I think. I should take an active role in leading us down that path. So I'm going to look at the Australian index today. Normally it's AU200. Um, some brokers have it as SPI200. We'll see what uh, uh, um, trade view has it as. We're going to look at crude oil. Our signal from last week's Sunday played out this week. So that is if you're in it. You know, if you're not in it, we're going to see what you can do to get in. We're going to look at USD JPY. You know, I've been craving for an entry in USD JPY for the longest time. AUD USD just to you know check up what's going on there. Swiss Franc JPY. It's quite a lot that we need to get through today. Cat Swiss Franc, uh, uh, NZD JPY, and then I think we can call it a day after we look at natural gas if there's time, right? So if there's no time, then you know it's, uh, we'll, we'll leave out natural gas for 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 another time, right? But if there's time to look at natural gas, we will. But this is kind of like the stuff I want to talk to you guys about today in War Room Seventy, um, just to 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 figure out where we're going, um, um how, how, how accurate trade plays. Remember, we are supply and demand traders. Firstly, supply and demand. Why? Because we understand that the markets are driven by institutions, and if we don't understand the markets from an institutional perspective, then we simply just don't understand the markets. Right? We're going to be using smart money concepts to 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 complete our analysis which is really technically a third leg of supply and demand right don't be fooled by a lot of people i see a lot of people are now claiming smart money concepts because they know how to spell liquidity uh it's really not the same right smart money concepts and then we're going to be looking at um, um and, and the other thing that we do in this channel is we use a lot of data right so so we use data we will research information to put together a good trading idea to help us grow our portfolios right um and I, th I think that's all we can do for the introduction don't forget all of this stuff is taught in our institutional trading course uh the link down below in the description so please do check that out right right so what an interesting week we just had uh, uh, uh folks we had we had we had nfp i won't cover nfp i did that before on thursday night i did the you know nfp stuff 
Friday before NFP dropped and and, and, and lot, like so I'm done. I'm done with the NFP. You know, uh, we've cleansed the NFP. You know, what, what I could do, however, is just to quickly show you uh, the chat that we use for that scenario analysis video. Once again, please do check out that link uh, uh, or, you know, you know, or that video when you're done, right? And this was the play. This is what people, this is what people dance about. This is what people want to over risk their account for. This, this is silly. I'm on the one hour time frame on Euro USD. This is the movement of NFP. This is, I, I just want you guys to see this stuff in real time. I'm gonna drop down all the way to the 15 minutes chart. NFP drop at either half past two on Friday. So let's find half past two. There we go. This big red candlestick here, that's NFP. This big red candlestick here is NFP. This 34 pips. This one candlestick for 34 pips is why a lot of people overrisk their account. 34 freaking pips on an asset, whether it's Euro USD, Pound USD, it really doesn't matter. On an asset on average that moves anywhere between 80 to 70 pips, 70 to 80 pips without news. This is all that happened on Friday. Price came to a marked out demand that we marked out before NFP dropped and rallied to a marked out supply. And I gave you the rules for the supply. Say at two o'clock while I was doing the video on that scenario analysis, if the third candle turns red, just know there's gonna be a supply there. Markets got turned red at two o'clock, rallied back to that supply, and then have come fluttering down and then consolidated to end the trading day. There's nothing special about nfp there's absolutely nothing special about trading news events i am asking you please do not prostitute your capital do not over risk your capital to trade stuff that happens on these charts every day i did the scenario analysis to point it across to you nothing happened uh this is friday this is thursday thursday was atp wednesday the markets were flat right there was just a flat movement but look at the pips look at this markets move all the time you don't need high volatile events all right this, this is literally on a day-to-day -day average on euro usd right and i think this is a mistake i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be 55 pips not 155 right so you know you know it, this is just for those who are really listening and wanting to learn right your, your, your capital is all you have you, you lose your capital you 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 are, you you are lost. You are so lost because you are not only endangering your long term trading psychology by refunding and losing, refunding and losing. There's nothing. It's part of the journey, but I just want you to know it's making the journey a lot harder. It's making the journey, you know, you know, a whole lot longer. But uh, you know, on top of that, you are just donating money. Master what is actually causing price to move. And I'll repeat again, if you wanna know what makes markets move, there are four things, supply and demand. We use smart money concepts to understand the traps, the algorithms, the, 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 the liquidity rates, etc. We follow the data because no one is smarter than any single person, but a good critical analysis of data, looking at good supply, institutional levels, will put that together. Number three, the smartest of them all will take the course because the course, teaches you the rules of the game all right so so you know you know fair and fine nfp was positive adp said nfp would be negative you know we've covered all that kind of stuff where to now right so markets are waking up to this news on monday um, um and, and that's where we normally see the bigger place right so finally now there's going to be an adjustment this coming week we know that as soon as nfp drops there are a couple of things that need to follow a week later right one of those things will be cpi right uh but you know this june uh what's it called what's it called that's called fed something fed rate monitoring tool. right this june is going to be interesting because this particular june we've got another f excuse me fomc meeting coming across in exactly one week from now i think yeah one week three days from now is going to be on the 15th of june i will definitely cover this live for you on the channel like i normally do uh right so the, 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 there's going to be a new uh interest rate hike or the possibility of a rate hike markets are split on the streets right some people feel like look man inflation has peaked so powell doesn't have to go 50 basis point anymore right and the other people think nah he will but you can see about 98 percent of, of market participants believe we're going to get a, a, a quarter basis point, a 0 0.25, uh, uh, whereas, you know, a very small number, I believe we're going to get a full uh, 50 basis point. And I'm saying this to say because the rate is already at 1%. So what we're looking to see is are we, are we going to add 20, 0 0.25 or 0 0.50, right? And I don't think Paul's going to change his mind. But if he does, 
you know, markets are going to move drastically, right? And we'll cover that kind of stuff the closer we are towards those dates. All right, so let's look at the first chart that we have, which is the dollar. Why are we checking out the dollar? Well, we need to see after such a successful, you know, jobs beat, a, a successful NFP beat, where, where the dollar stands, right? So just before NFP on Friday, in that scenario analysis video, you'll hear me say markets were somewhere down here below this, this line, this break of structure line, and I say, it seems to me markets want to move up. If markets want to move up, it appears to be positive. And that's exactly what happened. It appears positive, markets moved up, interest supply. Logically, I would have expected the supply to then continue the downward journey of the dollar down. But it seems like the job beat must have been really, 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 really good news. And money must have been pumping uh, seriously here. And it looks like this supply, like it's my, it's my opinion that this one hour supply is, is in trouble. All right. It's weak and it might break. Now, there are many times where price has broken supplies before, right, like this, uh, and then created an original turn somewhere there and then continued falling, all right? And then remember, original turns are not really for you to trade because you don't know when they're going to show up until they're there, all right? Um, what we can do, however, is to assume that there's a bearish drop here and draw a Fibonacci and see if we can match some logic right so i've got uh, a fibonacci line drawn here i'm just going to extend it to the left to the right and then you can see here we've got this bearish engulfing pattern a test of this bearish engulfing pattern 50 percent level retested the second time markets showed straight through so i'm looking for 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 some type of trade confirmation here and i don't think i will even, even if i find one i don't think i'm going to be very much interested in trading it right i'm going to drop as low as 30 minutes nothing 15 minutes is the last place I'll go. Nothing. All right. So, yeah, we, we, price might come back up here, you, you know, if, 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 if they want. Unfortunately, this is not really a good um, um, uh, uh, scenario place where I can give you guys an exact trade call. This is one of those trades where you actually just have to watch them do what they need to do. Um, because right now we've got an overplayed supply. It's not yet broken, but it's very, very weak. Yes, price could immediately start falling on Monday, but you know it's very rare that they they exhaust selling pressure in a supply just to kind of like use it. Normally they'd want to break it, right? But we've got a bearish engulfing pattern inside this, right? Almost to reinforce what's going on on the left. But it seems to me that if markets wanted to even push a little bit higher, they could if they wanted all the way up there and then we start to see a drop. Why am I still looking for drops in the dollar? Because I don't think the dollar has completed its fall. All right. And remember, this is a fall in the dollar that we, I still believe is predominantly bullish. Right. This is just a, a temporary fall in the dollar, a dollar that I still believe is bullish. Right. And this is what we have here. Right. Got a real strong order block on the daily time frame markets coming into that area of value um as early as i guess friday wednesday right so so two days just before nfp markets made it up there with this big green candle the next day on thursday they sold all those gains and then on friday when nfp came up we had a very tiny green candle there all right and this, this is on the daily time frame and remember my overview in the short to medium term for the dollar is the dollar has to come back somewhere down here. All right, I, I, I think the dollar will get a lot of strength there. And, I, I, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, logically, we've got 10 more days before Powell comes and increases interest rates, right? And I know the market is split between 50 basis point or 25 basis point, but it doesn't change the fact that we've got 10 more days until that play happens. I would, you know, you know, logically, if I really was, you know, uh, leaning towards a hawkish FOMC, I would love to see the dollar fall right now, so that by the time on the fifteenth we get here, the dollar is in a very good demand to to kind of like take off, right? But 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 that would mean Powell is going to do what the markets are not expecting. The markets are expecting Powell to cool down, stop with the fifty, uh, you know. A point basis hike go 0 0.25 right according to a lot of market participants markets are cooling off the inflation is cooling off we had good job numbers on friday right there's another nfp beat on friday remember fomc cares about job numbers and pricing so come on power cool down all right and and i don't know if you will i don't think you will personally speaking and and remember my bias is very bearish, right? And another big data point that I'm looking for, there we go. 
just before Powell speaks next week, Friday, the 10th, this coming week, the week that we're trading for, right? So this is the week of the 6th of June till the 10th of June. Friday, the 10th of June, we're going to get CPI data, right? That's a big deal. The CPI and the core CPI, very much of a big deal. Powell is going to be considering this data come weekend, Monday, Tuesday, before he talks on Wednesday, the other week, Wednesday the 15th, right? So look out for this play. I, I, I would be so hypocritical to call for a dollar pool just because of NFP data, right? I look at my structure and what my structure tells me. This is possible in the short term. Short term in the markets is, I don't know, for those of you who don't know, several hours to several days, uh, several hours to several days, yeah. So, so this week maybe, sure. I'm, I'm open to all these plays, but long term, where the money is on the DXY is to the downside, in my humble opinion. Right. So, bearing that kind of stuff in mind, we now know how to navigate between risk on and risk off assets. I've been doing this for about 70 war rooms. Today is war room 70. So, I'm hoping some of the market language I'm using, some of you guys are familiar with, but we can never take that for granted in case someone is new and they just subscribed. Welcome to the family. So, we will be you know, breaking stuff down, right? So maybe before I do all of that, let's just quickly see if there's anything we need to look at. Like check crude oil. Look at crude oil. Or we'll talk about oil later on, but we had a beautiful trade in crude oil. Um, um, so so which which we gave you know on Sunday. It was a high risk cowboy area, but it played out just fantastically. Right. So look at some Wall Street headlines today. Dollar climb stalls amid mixed economic signals, right? And what are the mixed signals? Well, the job numbers did well, but also unemployment still a little bit up. You know, the, you know, you can come back and read here. You know what else is going on. In, you know, in, in general, right? Uh, jobs aren't slowing enough to slow the Fed. Jobs aren't slowing enough to slow the Fed, right? So this this headline suggests that you know the Fed might still go fifty basis point uh, a hike, and that's kind of like where I'm leaning to right now. I have not seen enough data to kind of like change my mind on that. Like Wall Street Force, to, to, and then we can look at a couple of stocks. Um, I don't want to do too much teaching today. I feel a bit exhausted. It's been quite a busy week. And then we did the Friday thing. Uh, so today I'm just going to really just kind of like buckle down and run you guys through some signals. You can see overall, I think this is so fascinating. This we have to talk about. This, but well, we're going to come back quickly and do signals for, for NASDAQ 100 and and your indices but let me just find a normal nasdaq chart that is not marked up by me i, I don't want to go to to the one that i always use i want to just find a normal us 100 chart right <laughs> oh man you know we are going to do something similar to scenario analysis only is going to take about 30 seconds because of time i want to look at the month of may i brought this up in the 365 public telegram group i think it's called uh, uh 365 traders war room on telegram but the link is somewhere in the description and i just want to show you something i'm looking for may so i just want to do one quick month with you on the nasdaq the month of may i'm on the daily time frame on the nasdaq i'm looking for the very first day of may Right, so the first trading day of May is the 2nd of May, all right, on the NASDAQ. And then I want to look at the last day of May. So just before the 1st of June, right, we're in a new trading month, just before the 1st of June. There we go, 31. In here are 31 trading days, or actually less because you can't trade the stuff on the weekends. Um, 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 you know, it, and this is what I want you guys to understand. Some of you who think you are market geniuses, drawing supply and you know, you know, support and resistance lines and all that other kind of crazy stuff. This is what I want you to remember when trading company indices. What we are doing does not matter. This is a stock. A stock is generally a long-term operator, a long-term investment vehicle. Look. I want you to hear this logic. Traders, a lot of market volatility, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of this, a lot of that. This stock basket, actually, it's not even just a stock, it's a basket, was opened on the 1st of May somewhere here. And then it went down, and we're talking about market crashes, and then we spoke about rallies, and it just kept going up and down, up and down, playing with everybody, and closed where it started. NASDAQ 100. I did this for the public. 
I use the S&P 500. I can do this on any chart. If you look at it, Wall Street, Wall Street, Wall Street, these guys here just played with a lot of people's emotions, created fear in the market. It worked very well because remember, as a trader, you might take this for granted. But if you're a stock investor, you are actually selling shares. You're not just selling shares, guys. You're selling ownership. It's like selling your house and giving them the title deeds to your shares. And what Wall Street is doing is buying. Every time there's capitulation, giving up, there's a whole lot of buying of the same thing that people are giving away. You're giving it away because you're afraid. You're afraid because you don't really understand long-term pictures, etc., etc. When we trade, we never invest how we trade. I'm selling Bitcoin. I'm selling stocks. I'm selling this as a trader. But I'm using the profit as an investor to buy a lot of these assets because they're down for a discount. But look at the price for, 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 for an average sober investor. Nothing happened to his price. It started here. It ended there. Like, like, it, like literally we're talking about a, a zero comma something point something percent difference in your, your value of your stock dropping. This is what caught out a lot of traders, market volatility fear. Okay. Now, I will say off the bat, even though we're going to do a proper NASDAQ analysis, and I don't know why I'm starting my video like this today, but I might as well. I will say off the bat, I am still team bear in the markets. I am still team bear in the markets. And all you have to do, right, to understand why is just Google top 10, top 20, top 30, top 40, whatever it makes you happy, NASDAQ, uh, companies that make up the NASDAQ 100. Right, we're going to look at a few in super fast speed. Just off the top of my head, one of them is Tesla. Just look at Tesla. What did I do wrong? Look at Tesla. What is, there we go. Right, Tesla is like one of the biggest, uh, you know, stocks, like billions and billions of mega cap, right? Look at this thing coming down. You, 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 you can't, there's literally no debating. Tesla is coming down and they want it to come down. In fact, Bill Gates has almost a billion point something US dollars shorts on Tesla. Granted, he's got a big fight with Elon Musk and you know, it's getting a little bit petty, but a lot of people's money is now on the line in this billionaire's fight. But look at this. Tesla is coming down. This, this stock, guys, in my humble opinion, is worth about 1,800 US dollars. If, 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 if you really do the math, if you calculate the PE ratio, I know this is not the platform for it. Um, I'm, uh, most people subscribe to my channel are traders, not stock traders, but more currencies uh, type of thing. So I won't go deep into that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you that this stock is coming all the way down below 500 to about 470 US dollars to stock. Sell this thing. Go find good brokers. Ivan Trade has got Tesla. Easy to trade, easy to buy, easy to sell. I told you guys that I was closing all my buyers, which you saw me do at the public telegram group. And we're looking, this is one of the oversold. There are so many short positions lined up against Tesla right now. Wall Street is going to bring this puppy down. Whether they've got something against the past, whether it's a good play, it doesn't matter. We are going to buy one day somewhere here. But until then, we got to calm down. Don't be stubborn. This is good money. This is good money. So Tesla is coming down. Part of your Nasdaq one. I'm bringing this up because there'll be those people who are constantly trying to buy it at half past three every single day in the market, and they don't know why they keep losing. Let's look at Apple. Everybody knows Apple. Apple's um, a, 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 a market cap is bigger than Africa's GDP put together. This is over a two trillion US dollar company. Where's it going? It's going down. So when these big companies start to pull NASDAQ 100 down, you get a medium-term trend. I mean, I, I can do this all day. I don't want to waste too much time. Look at the one that's still flirting with debt, Microsoft, inside the NASDAQ, right? Bill Gates, okay? The, the, this trend line traders are going to start buying here. I don't think that's a good call. I'm pretty sure we're going to see this tank a little bit very soon. I don't. Right? All these, I mean, you can see, I type them, you can see they're part of NASDAQ, right there. It's a stock in NASDAQ. These are big companies that make up the so-called NASDAQ. We've been trading these things in the senior traders room. This is why all my chats are marked up. Like, I, 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 there's nothing. You go to the 
you do what I've taught you many times with, with a good broker, there's a link in my in my description, by the way, uh, interactive brokers, if you want a, a good broker for stocks, interactive brokers is amazing. I do calls, I do puts, options, I trade, it, it, like everything, like, like fantastic. I do cross the threshold. N N NVIDIA is the last one I'm going to look at with you guys. I, and, and we're just going to move on, right? All in NASDAQ, these companies are yearning for some discipline, for some market correction. And it's happening in front of everyone's eyes, right? But, but people are going to be stubborn. So the NASDAQ that you want to buy with your 100 US dollar account at the Street, just remember that most institutions are shooting down the individual stocks that make up that NASDAQ. And so as logic proceeds, price is going to fall. But we'll, we'll look into that analysis a little bit later. All right, so 365, sorry for that. Um, um, let's. Let's get the bigger with that. So the first chart we want to look at today after DXY is Euro JPY. Euro JPY. We want to look at Euro JPY uh, because it's been a minute and I think some zones at the top have been opened, right? Somewhere up here was the target. Target acquired. Uh, 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 and remember, we've got, you know, some type of divergence, uh, 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 monetary policy divergence with, uh, Euro JPY, dollar JPY, pound JPY, I've taught on divergences, uh, monetary policy divergences, JPY is going to try and keep the yen cheap and all these other countries are going to keep trying to increase the interest rate hikes to, you know, deal with inflation. And what that does is it creates a monetary policy divergence where one reserve bank, for example, Euro, is pushing its currency to be strong, right, by, in, by interest rates. And JPY insists on weakening its currency because it's the biggest loan shock of the world and wants to remain globally attractive in that manner. And when you get that, you get a simple trade idea. You buy the stronger currency because as the weaker currency keeps falling, euro in this particular case will just keep going up and up and up and up, right? So it's just a simple, clean trade idea. You level this up because here I don't have time to break this down on a one hour intraday time frame. Otherwise, my videos will go from being about two hours to six hours. I don't mind doing it because I have to do it for myself anyways during the week. But I know that a lot of people's attention span might not survive that. So here, we mark out the swing trades. We mark out the long-term trends. We mark out the medium-term trends, several days to weeks. And what you do with that information is you locate good entries. You can do swing entries, which is what I'm going to give you today. We can go deeper, like dig a little bit deeper if you want, right? With the with the information I'm gonna I've, I've put out on the channel, right? So we saw on the governing time frame, we are still on course, right? Uh, uh, literally a, a, a course that we marked out on the channel a long, long time ago. We will only consider direction when price arrives at the governing supply, right? Right now, these feelers are going to be old. You know, there's so much buying power in this particular position. I have already mentioned. When we go down to a mirror of perspective, we can now see that whatever was holding price in here, you're going to see some daily supplies, H4 supplies, um, and you know that kind of thing on the weekly time frame, uh, even, even on the left, uh, to me, is, is seemingly seems to be now removed. Anytime price institutions, specifically banks, remove a supply, we know that they want to go up. And anytime they remove a demand, we know that they want to come down, right? So there was really no mercy to this daily supply. We already had marked it red. Um, if you roll the tape, you go through my war rooms. I tell you this ahead of time. I, if you see something marked in red, I tell you it's what we call a cowboy area. It's a high risk area. Do not basically say if you want to bet against the trend, there's a high chance we're going to get burnt, right? And this particular supply um, uh, was very much misleading, wasn't really rule based. You know, it didn't get the type of imbalance that we want. So we always knew that this was kind of, uh, you know, not very faulty, but markets have done a very good job of clearing it. Now, what we want to do is to understand what price is going to do next. There's still a lot of money up for grabs between where price is today and where markets are going. And to be very, very clear, you actually want to be a part of that movement. Between where price is right now, over 470 pips. Between where price can first come down to and then go back to the target, that's about 800 and something pips. So you really want to learn how to get into such long-term movements. Right, I'm going to switch to the, what's it called again? Kinyashi candlesticks, just to track my volume. And I'm going to draw 
one of the first obvious demand levels on the charts, which is something that we actually saw earlier on um, um, in normal candlestick format. I'm just going to mark it out in green. Green means buy, yellow means sell for me, red means cowboy, right? So we've got a, a, some significant buying power somewhere down here. And this is important. Why? Because it's the OB, right? The day one demand that broke, literally, that literally broke. Uh, 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 you know, market structure, right? It literally is the cause of, of, of taking out these highs, taking out these highs. And so all I want in my life is patience. Patience, it took me nine months to watch the mother of my kids carry them before I ever got to hold my daughter. Literally nine months, I was patient. It took me, uh, 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 used to take me four weeks to, to, to work at a job I didn't like to get some type of weight. I was patient. It took me four years to get my law degree. I was patient. It took me five years to get my postgraduate degree in industrial economics. So it took me another six years in total for my first year to get my first master's degree, seven years for my first year for my second master's degree. Things take time. Be patient. Let price come down is what I'm trying to tell you. Let markets come down. I will not be buying here, buying there, shopping around. I won't. I won't. Until I get a fib. Right. The only thing that changes this plan, and this is why I always tell people, but the war rooms are great because they are for free. We don't charge people for trading. But when markets change, make other smaller micro movements during the weeks. You want to be empowered with the rules to know what to do. Because zero is not going to make a video every single time an asset slightly changes direction. So, for example, anticipate this happening. If this is to happen and you see two weeks from now I'm in a trade, just know it's because there was maybe another green candle and then all of a sudden we got a swing low. And then all of a sudden I take my swing low and my swing high, I draw a Fibonacci. And only when I get a Fibonacci and a golden ratio will I come to H4 now to find an order block that matches it. It could be any one of these buggers. But right now it does not apply because of the daily time frame there is still no rule-based need to draw a fib. I repeat, right now, that is not my thinking. My thinking is to only buy it down here because right now there is no rule-based need to, to, to draw a Fibonacci, right? There, there, there are specific rules where Fibonacci will draw, right? Now, we just want to check left. We just want to, we just want to see the speed bumps ahead on the chart, on the daily time frame, any daily supplies that are not yet mitigated, any fresh daily supplies that we need to be worried about and geez these supplies are from a long long time ago markets are now on on, on on like back to 2016 right so this is where price is right now this is what price is trying to clear we saw earlier on on the right markets have broken structure but this is what price is dealing with right now you can see historically this is a bus stop for price right historically this is a bus stop for price so if i draw a horizontal ray across and say this is the uh, a distal line, if you've done the course, you'll know what distal is. This is the proximal line of this particular supply. I'm going to mark it in yellow. Right. And I'm going, to, I'm going to extend it to the right right now, but I'm not that concerned. Remember, I actually don't want to do anything in this chart right now because I am a buyer in this market. So I can see that price has finally arrived at a place to sell. Good for price, but right now I am a buyer in this market, so I'm going to wait for my buy area. What I need is the supply to do its best to push price down to me, right? And then the next big target is here. This is a really a good place to be. I will become a seller in this market one day when price gets up there. All right, so now let's scroll back to the right to see what we're dealing with, right? So markets broke a short term supply. Okay, we see now now I have the full story. So let me redraw my line. I have the full story now. Markets broke the structure, this order block down there. It's now made contact with the supply. There will be, you know, cowboys and cowgirls, he has and he hoes who wanna, you know, sell a bit. That's fine. If you want, I will not be with you. I'm gonna wait. Use your money to push price down to me, and then I'm gonna be buying up there. I'll have three entries at the buy. Uh 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 first buy i've told you guys this in my in my market opening stuff i i mark the zones between uh, uh my stop loss and my my first obvious target and my first buy is just to break the bank all right if you want to be risk averse risk sensitive just remember that you're dealing with an area of value that is very very overpopulated with real order blocks so let's really refine it because it's too big right now Right. It's just a lazy way to draw it for my eyes. But when, you're now, when, I, when I'm now by myself trading, 
I'm going to have to refine the area of value, right? 218 pips is a lot of money. Doesn't matter the lot size, right? So we've got a bearish in golf in pattern that makes a short base, and then we've got a bullish in golf in pattern right there. So it stands to me that I can cut some 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 uh, 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 pips, right? By just reducing my my size a little bit there, which is slightly better. I know some people might even want to take that to the next level there, but I don't want to be left out by price. So I'm going to be using this as an area of competition for my area of value. I've taught this many times. You're going to understand areas of value. And simple, entry one, I will take profit halfway through. Halfway through my entry point to my target, and my target is going to be this valid yellow supply right now because it's not yet broken. If the supply is not yet broken, respect the supply. Not respecting the supply and thinking you have some superpower to break through that area of value is silly. Smart money will have you for dinner. Right, so I wanna break rank. Uh, every time I risk money, I don't wanna lose money. So the target prop's gonna be 50% for entry number one. Entry number two is gonna be based on clean risk to reward ratio. And I'm hoping for one is to three. I'm hoping for one is to three to supply uh, to this yellow area, this yellow supply. And you can see, let's see if I can draw it as accurately as possible to the yellow place. There we go. It's 2,95, right? That's basically one to three. So take profit one is to just say, I put $10 on the line, give me back my 20 bucks. Simple. When I do that, I am building my capital automatically. Trade, take profit number two is by the supply, which is a one is to three risk reward. Those are the trades that actually, let's actually fix this. There we go. Okay, so still close enough, still good enough, right? Those are the type of trade that rock the world. They literally make you a consistent profitable trader. If I can risk one dollar in the market and make three dollars, risk 900 for 1,000 trader long term, long term average profitability trader. Take profit two does not exist because i'm gonna break even as market markets might come back and zero me out but if i am lucky take profit number three is the main long-term target all the way up there but i will have broken even anyways all right so so i won't repeat this across all assets it, it, it stands to reason that this is obvious right so this is what long-term mid-term sorry should look like so it looks like maybe price comes here Right, eventually we're going to have some type of trajectory like that. This line is purely artificial. I'm looking at a 50% replace between the two distances so I can make some money and know that I made money off the trade. I break even on, uh, on, on trade two and three. Trade two, I exit at the supply because the supply is not yet broken. If it gets broken before, I can hold it even longer. Take uh, trade idea number three or entry number three runs. She's my swinger. She's the one who makes me rich all the time. Simple. You do that for all your assets, rinse and repeat, you will be fine. All right. So, Euro JPY done and dusted. Okay. We, we've got uh, an interesting uh, um, 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 supply here from, from 2016. And then we've got some real targets there. This is where we are going to start thinking about selling, right? Becoming a seller in this market, right? So, supply one daily uh uh weekly and it's also a it's a big deal there's a really really big deal supply right so you know this is five students who know what these codes mean you've seen me do them many times in our live classes right guys second area of value sorry for going a bit fast i'm just giving out signals like i said um i don't think there'll be much teaching i, I had this out by the way before we started today's war room you know you know the concept is quite a flawed concept I've read three books around this 10,000 hour thing, but my goodness, it's a good basis point, right? To be expecting anything, you need to put 10,000 in it. So I just wanna, because a lot of you guys, let, let's say it's not flawed. When I say flawed, it doesn't mean we can't use it. I'm just saying it's not as accurate because human beings are very different. Our learning capabilities are very different. We take time, some people learn things fast, blah, blah, blah. But for those of you who wanna trade today, become a millionaire tomorrow, the 10,000 hour rule would require you to put in about 416 days of constant market education in the market to become a master of trading. Now, I just want to remind you that in any 416 days, you're not studying the whole time. You're sleeping, you're eating, 
you are engaging in other activities, you're going to work, you're taking care of babies, you're exercising, you're watching Netflix, blah, blah, blah. So imagine if you broke this down, that's not even realistic for a lot of people, to four hours, to four hours a day. Could you constantly put four hours a day into your trading, mastering supply and demand? Let's say you could. Let's say you could master in Forex markets. A lot of you's next big problem is what are you mastering? The information you're mastering. Some of you have spent 10,000 hours been in trading for the last five years, learning stupid things, ridiculously useless things, mastering indicators at their settings, mastering all sorts of silly strategies. What happens to your morale if you put over 416 days, over 10,000 hours, mastering the wrong thing i'm not trying to plug my course but i will tell you we teach you the right thing but let's say i'm not talking about 365 what are you going to do what are you going to do five years from today in your life and you say forex is a scam because you've been in the markets for six years and you're still not constantly profitable where are you putting in your mastery hours this is a real problem in the industry please consider this now have a good routine whatever you decide to master my course or not my course that's that that's your prerogative but you're going to put the time in i thought i'd just bring this up today in today's war room some of you think you're going to be an overnight success in the market there's no such thing especially if you're not disciplined especially if you're not you've got to find the right thing and then put in the ten thousand hours into the right thing at four hours a day this will drastically extend this to about three to four years because the 416 days in front of you assumes you are a robot who does not sleep, who does not eat. 416 days dedicated their time to doing something like I did in front of you guys called scenario analysis on the Friday video, right? And most of you don't have that kind of time. Be patient, but it has to be part of your know-how. Remember. All we are doing together here on Sundays and during the week is every day finding new ways to become better traders. Right? It's, it's that simple. That's, that, that's all it is. You have to become better and better and better. You are not going to become better if you're following silly information. Right? The reason why mentorship works, good mentorship, real mentorship, is a lot of crappy mentorship. But good mentorship gives you, I want to say a shortcut, but it tells you where not to go, where you'll get lost. It maps out the journey. It doesn't, it doesn't give you a miracle pill. At least not my mentorship removes you from the truth, puts you into the knowledge. Right? I say this last week Sunday, I'll say it one more time. The quickest way to clean your room, I tell my seven-year-old this all the time. The quickest way to clean your room is to clean your room. The quickest way to become a consistently profitable trader is to become. You must become. You must get on the becoming journey. You must start to put in the work. If you're waiting for me on Sundays, you are becoming a good YouTube viewer. You are not becoming a good trader. A good trader has a, a, a time apart to apply the tools. And if you're like, watch tools, then that's your problem. What are you spending your time doing if you don't even have the tools? I like some of the regular students are in a better place. At least they know what they should be practicing, what they should be uh, practicing. All right. In trading, and I'll leave you with this last thought in trading, practice makes permanent, not perfect. Practice makes permanent. You keep practicing the wrong thing, the wrong thing becomes permanent. permanent. You keep trying to find a loop of strategies. That's permanency, not perfection. There is no perfection in trading. So try to get to a place where you become a person who is practicing the right thing. Right? The link is down below. Right? For those of you who are listening with your third ear. Right? Euro AUD, we mark this out. There we go. You know, clean clean as a whistle. Um, um, I spoke about you know exiting the cell down here, and and then I saw this on Friday. I saw this yesterday. It seems like yesterday we ended with a bullish engulfing pattern. So if you're in it with me, please note it is a good time to break even. If you're not a swift trader, you're not built for that life. Close. Because what what this could mean is we're gonna have a situation where markets will and not even that high. I apologize. Right, markets will 
will, will, will come and want to retest this bullish engulfing pattern. And then we, I saw that we've got a bearish engulfing pattern there that needs to be mitigated. And so that might then delay your profits, right? So I expect, you can expect another week of, of regaining all this beautiful money we made selling just for price to do this and then to come back down, right? Uh, for someone like me, if you've got two or three entries, in, yeah, we'll close one of them, right? This is good money. Very, very good money, right? This is a very good area, a very good target that we spoke about, and markets are doing just what we expected. So, so that's my trade call for Euro AUD. If you're not in the trade, right? If you're not in the Euro AUD, then this is what you're looking out for, right? If you, if 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 it's your first time marking up your Euro AUD charts and you're now starting to to think about you know taking a trade here, then this is for you. This is the this is the, 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 the market perspective that I'm giving. It's like, well, look to sell there. If you miss this particular sell, look to sell there, all right? Um, and then for everyone else who, who's been, you know, quite, quite uh, on top of the ball with, with, with the six signals that we've been given, then yeah, this is what we're looking at, right? There's still a bit of room for a drop, but then we are at a base of a demand, right? I told you guys that this demand looks weak to me. There's not a bullish engulfing pattern. We don't have an imbalance. Some traders consider this a demand, all right? And you can see on Friday markets, when markets arrive, you decide to kind of like just sit down on it, right? Sit down on it, right? I still expect, you know, a further push to the downside. We shall see, all right? So just, just bear this in mind. Don't lose out on good money if, if you're not confident in the setup anymore. The setup has really paid off, made you some, some money, take the money. Um, and then if you're long-term like me, or your your risk parameters add a new cell setup um, and then we keep it going we can look at euro aud before we move forward by the way we can look at it uh properly give you a governor blah 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 right you can see why right markets dropped markets made contact with the with the you know an extreme area of competition right um, um in, the, in the in the governing demand um generally speaking I would have very much love to see a push to the lower side here. I don't. This is what I would love to do to, to see. I don't know if markets want to see what I want to see, but I'm simply saying I would have loved for an even much smaller drop there, right? But for for all intents and purposes, I'm I'm urging you to be very careful with the cells that we're in and potentially to take profits right now because if markets are now starting to take instructions right from governing demands then then you can expect continuous upward movement which means like i said this could happen this will get tested then the next profit target is going to be here now so we're going to be down there and when markets come markets are going to start removing these areas of value right so so we are looking at a very you know you know midterm uh um 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 um, um, um euro stretch right as, as the dollar continues to remain weak or keep falling like we said in the first chart, all these assets are going to, to, to start to rally. And, and I would encourage you to go back to our war rooms, right? There's one of those war rooms that we did together where I looked at currency indexes, right? The strength of the euro relative to itself, the strength of the dollar, the strength of this, right? All of that was to prepare us for the next 10 war rooms, from war room 70 to war room 80, which is 10 weeks, right? So every 10 weeks, we look at currencies, a relative currency strain. That's absolutely important to do. And we did speak about how, well, as long as the DXY keeps showing it's a midterm weakness, right, and keeps falling, this type of assets are going to enjoy the strength, right? So you can see basic technical analysis stuff, you know, prices creating um, some higher lows. We have not yet created higher highs as yet, but the moment we break over this game over, all right then you know we're going up and this is really where the, the bulk of the selling needs to happen because then we're back to yet another governing supply on euro aud right i'm just taking my time because i really wanna you know you know emphasize the, the stuff going on there right so that's euro aud done and dusted next chart nzd usd it's been a long long time i'm literally interested to see what's going on here Right. Start off with the governing time frame, and then we'll come back to the daily. Okay, so almost like Euro AUD, just a few slight differences. Markets have finally equalized or trying to get down to this area of value of the COVID 2020. 
We bring up March 2020 a lot up because that's when market all risk sensitive assets recovered. All right, since then, and, and, and I apologize for the notes, so let's just go, let's find another broker that can give us a clean chart. There we go. Uh, because, you know, someone will be like, I, I, I didn't even see there, just so many things, that, right? So let's, this is all we have. This is what I was just trying to say. So this is March 2020, COVID recovery, markets do whatever they want to do, you know, get, you know, as high as they want. So I'm just going to draw two conjoined supplies, right? Covering this bearish and golfing pattern right there. Markets make their way up there, pure supply and demand, basic stuff, module one stuff. I teach it in the first two weeks of the course. This is all you're looking at, understanding the trend. Where does the trend come from, right? So we, we get a beautiful play. Markets ran from a demand to a supply, from a supply back to a demand. I mean, what what, what more could you want from trading? Right. Um, along the way, though, on the governing time frame, we are starting to get some 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 snippets of of inconclusive areas of value, right? So you can see. The one that I'm just drawing right now was created somewhere there in June 2021. Markets came back to it in October, November 2021. Markets dropped. Markets have created a new one now, right? And if you want to, you know, complicate your, your, your you know, complicate, but to add more layer, we're breaking, breaking of this demand here. Uh, uh, markets seeking, you know, a much more lower push. If you want to add one more tool, which is very important, is to just re recognize that, you know, there was some type of bearish trend here, which was broken, right? And then markets, you know, kept, you know, you know, wanting to, 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 to pitch some type of downward movement. And, and they are, they are back to this demand. This demand, to me, remains fresh and untested. If I use the, you know, the area of competition, markets didn't almost, touched it but didn't quite touch it if you go um the akini hashi candlesticks which is something important to check then you realize that markets have made contact with the demand and so this area of value is now you know in question right so demands are at play nzd demand is at play so nzd wants to rally against the dollar the dollar is falling so it's perfect timing right and that's how we will play these exchanges right but 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 just be, everything is going to be very short-lived things are going to turn Quite quickly. So here we've got a bridging golf and pattern, and what seems to be a PCP that has made kind of the demand. We could get a, a weak fill, or we could get price coming here and then coming down, right? So, you know, either way, uh, but right now my core is to say potentially a demand is in control more than a supply on the weekly time frame. We don't see anything too crazy except for a flip zone. I explained to you guys I don't like trading flip zones, but I know they exist. Um, or, or not that I don't like to trade them, but because I haven't taught them, people haven't viewed the module three yet, and I haven't taught them, then I don't want to, you know, complicate anyone's life. We'll talk about flip zones when everybody is now has access to module three, but this is it, right? Uh, broken supply, markets remember that. It's sitting on top of a governing demand, markets use it, markets go back up, right? Flying up there. And this is a good time on the weekly time frame, in my humble opinion, to draw a bearish Fibonacci since price was coming down, right? So you can see even the golden ratio is at the monthly supply. Remember this whole yellow zone here is the monthly supply. I hope I'm making sense. I hope I'm I'm not going too fast. I hope you guys are with me. I hope you guys are with me. Go back there. Governing supply marked in yellow. Weekly Fibonacci confirming the yellow, right? Saying, yeah, man, there's some money here, All right? If you go to the daily time frame, it'll be a money maker. If there's a beautiful daily supply, just chilling there. Yes, there is. Can you feel it? Yeah, bro. Right, there we go. So we've got a, da a daily supply. Just always, nothing in life is easy, right? Check that. There are two daily supplies, so just be very mindful of that. But the point is there's some strong self-pressure there daily within a week within a governing supply, right? And that's really what you want to to observe, I'm gonna delete the weekly Fibonacci, right? And this is what it looks like on the daily time frame. And so we can expect some more upside movement, right? As soon as the dollar follows suit, which is to drop, right? We've got a clearance there, clearing a, a day supply. It's now broken. Um, you know, markets. While the dollar makes up its mind, markets could sit here or even come there. This would be even better. For those of you who want to counter trend, then that would be the trade for you to take. 
those of you who don't want to wait for the sell like me and want to make money now that will be the money maker if markets come down there that's your buy area and that's your sell area down there up there right buy sell not sell buy buy low sell high right so this is kind of like what i've seen in nzd usd so i'm going to go back now to my chart which i believe had might have been a little bit blind and had too many notes right so you can see here historically we've marked out the supply and we now believe that the supply is most likely broken like we just drew right now on NZT USD, it's most likely broken. So this supply goes away immediately, right? We no longer can trust it. If you are in it, um, yeah, then, you know, unfortunately, this is going to be one of those, call it a, an L, right? Markets, I don't think markets are going to sell um, very much. I'll, I'll double check my, my own personal trades. But for some reason, I don't think I'm in NZT USD, right? So I just don't know if I told everybody or not but yeah this is what we're looking at here because this supply is now failed now once the supply is failed we know what's going to happen right so what would be nice is please do not jump into the trade wait for confirmation markets could bounce here without us i'm not going to take that bounce there if markets turn here without us then you know it is what it is right markets are done could also just leave there on monday markets could say look we created a bullish engulfing pattern we broke a supply we retested the bullish engulfing pattern on Friday. Monday is a good day to start buying NZD USD. If that's the case, then Monday is a good day to see the dollar start to fall. If the DXY refuses to fall, then don't be in a rush to buy. All right. So for me, I'd like to take some risks all the way down there. Right. And then, and then, like I said, we will wait to see what's going on with this supply and this supply the strain together. All right. So that's NZD USD. I hope that is clear. Next chart on the list is the NASDAQ, right? So I, I know I did a quick introduction on NASDAQ and I showed you guys that when markets open on the 1st of May, when markets close on the, on, the, on the 31st of May. And I also remember we just kind of like looked at a couple of stocks that make up the NASDAQ 100, right? A lot of you guys truly, truly, truly have been I guess, you know, charmed by this asset and you just think this is the only thing in the markets that makes money, which is an unfortunate view, right? So let's see what's going on here, right? So NASDAQ took out uh, uh, an H4 level and remember, you already know why price came all the way here. You already know this because I showed it to you. It is literally where the month started on the 2nd of May, right? So this level here, at about 12 1800 up until where markets close on that same day we'll just call it 12 900 right is this whole area where markets are right now this whole area here hope you guys can see what i'm talking about right so this whole area here everything in here is just you know markets and where they've been you know throughout the whole year or throughout the whole last month right so this is where markets started and this is how markets closed on Friday, right? Coming back to the zone, right? So market memory is at play here. Markets do break this area of value. And, and the truth of the matter is there is a strong H4 zone here, but it gets nicer and tighter on the two-hour time frame. If you want to see the real supply, there it is, you know, nicely drawn. Uh, and markets kind of like extend up right now. Again, just resist the... The urge to always want to be a front runner and just buying stuff in the markets. Okay, it's it's really not the the best um, idea. All right, this is one of the places we marked out to buy on the Nasdaq last week Sunday. Okay, and I think this past week we only got into US thirty and Bitcoin buys. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the US. I trade that were triggered in all my swings because there are a lot of swings running, but I think it was US 30, crude oil, and Bitcoin. But anyways, this is what happened, right? So, 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 this buys here, I was not part of this, right? Because we already marked this out as a flip zone in the city, in, in, in the Telegram group. We spoke about it. Markets played ar around and markets are still to drop, right? So, if you want to buy this market, maybe down here is a good place to try. Personally speaking, I've already explained to you why in the long run, I am very bearish. I do think, right, we need some, some movement to the upside first so I can sell properly. And last week, Sunday in war room number 69, 
if I use the ghost effect and I, I refer it back to March of, uh, of 14, 15th of March, uh, uh, where, 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 where the stock market gave us a two week bull run, right? And then we drew a ghost feed of what that two week would look like. So we just kind of like finished week one from that ghost feed. And a lot of the days in week one we spent just consolidating, right? So now we need a strong break to the upside, maybe somewhere in this zone here, and then we can we can uh, see a big sell off or markets could just sell off immediately, right? It won't matter in 10 days time because in 10 days time on the 15th of June, Powell is gonna give us a plan for the markets, right? And that's what markets are gonna, gonna be pricing in this week. Uh, look out for the headlines, look out for the headlines. Markets are gonna be pricing in a lot of fear, um, a lot of FUD around interest rate heights, right? But there is no supply here anymore. It's been broken, the two hour supply. So I'm gonna remove this. And all of a sudden it looks like charts are just hanging in the air, right? So we need to see where markets are going. Either they're coming all the way up here, right? The 13,500 for some correction power, or they're just gonna keep dropping, right? So I would be cautious at this buy level, right? And if it does work, right? Maybe that should be a good target, right? Something like that. Or markets could supersede this whole area. It'll just all depend on where price is in relation to the FMC announcement, all right? So please bear that in mind. Right, okay, so that's NASDAQ 100 done. Uh, the next one then would be S&P 500. S&P 500 used the level that we marked out on Sunday, right? Very clean. Uh, uh, so it was S&P, US 30, Bitcoin. They all used it. NASDAQ 100, the level was lower. I explained to you guys last week Sunday, Bullish order block, clean imbalance, takes out a supply opposing area of value, therefore powerful area of value. I say, mark up. Uh, I put out a note on the public telegram group. I was like, guys, please adjust your areas of value to match a one hour order block. So instead of waiting somewhere down here, mark up these areas of competition. I announced it. I remember writing that out. Um, and this is what I was looking. You can see if you look to the left now, there is a, a slightly higher order block, which I suspected markets were gonna use as an area of competition and turn to, and that's exactly what happened, right? But I told you guys ahead of the stuff in the public telegram group after I'd already given out the signal in the war. What's the lesson there? Join our free public telegram group to get weekly updates, right? Because instead of waiting down here, most of us will follow those rules got filled there. It's literally typed out there. Right, and markets did a good job running, and then we had the NFP pre-sale, uh, uh, pre, you know, pre and after sale type type of situation, which is fine. Right, where to next? Now, I no longer, you know, really, really recommend buying in the zone unless if you know that it's a short-term buy. You know, as far as I'm concerned, what area of competition is engaged? My entire order block is on trial. All right, and remember, if this order block drops, we are looking at a bigger set uh, as you know dropped all the way down to these levels just below 399 uh, uh, uh zero right so so it could be a big deal so just be very very careful about how you choose to align yourself this week you know last week was slow for currencies i know i saw people complaining this week be very careful right markets are hungry to make up some money from you right so that's a better area of value now to wait for, but it's all gonna depend on sentiment around the Fed interest rate hikes and just market participants, not withstanding the war, monkey pox. Now there's a whole lot of things going on in the world right now that are just driving price up and down crazy, right? But for the most part, you guys know, medium term, which is several, days to several weeks i believe s p 500 is still to see a lot of downside i truly believe that with all my heart i am still very much a bear in this particular market um, um and only time will tell right but i i truly believe that yes sure we are mitigating one order block but yeah this is going to be at play i i do believe this is going to be at play eventually right so, so just be very mindful of that. Be very mindful of that medium term to long term. So the second half of this year, during summer markets, all that kind of stuff, S and P five hundred is going to fall. This is going to be a tough year for assets, right? Powell said it best. 
destroying demand will help the economy. And I explained to that demand is the equivalent to buying assets that make the money. Assets that make the money is housing, destroying demand. So there's going to be a housing crisis. Assets that make the money are stocks, destroying demand, destroying demand, destroying demand. This is coming, right? So the liquidity crisis is here, okay? So that's S&P 500. Um, let me just, sorry, be very clear about what I'm going to be doing. Because I know a lot of you are like, he just taught but didn't tell us what he's doing. I'm doing nothing right now in the S&P 500. Still so the NASDAQ, I'm waiting for that level down there on the H4, uh, H2. Look at what the S&P 500 looks like on the daily. And there's a range, it's waiting, right? So you could expect this bullish engulfing pattern has now been retested to happen. If they do happen, You've got my play, my place to sell. Like I always want to sell high. I really, 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 really want to sell high. But if markets dip first, lower, then I'm going to be looking for buys. The ones that I marked out earlier on. Buy all the way down there to, to go back up, right? But maybe this week I should do an updated video on COT. Because if we see where the banks are, and that's the whole point of that beautiful data. And then we don't have to speculate about where price is going to go first. So I'll compile some COT data for you this week. And then I'll let you know my, my final thoughts uh, on US 30. Triggered in this play. And then markets like violently reversed, right? So we, we took the buys here, markets went up. Somewhere there, I got out, told you guys I'm getting out. Markets dropped down took out all the demand and then gave us more than one is two, three, really rallied all the way up there and then pre and after NFT. So this area of the green on US 30, no go. No comprendo, no go, right? Do not use it. Do not do not come back. You, you, you remember there's that one X that you told yourself, no matter what, if this is a zombie apocalypse, you're never going back to that one X. Yeah, that's this area of value here. Don't, don't go back to that thing. Right. But what you should note, though, on US 30, and I can now delete all these things because we used them to make money this past week, is that, uh, you know, as markets were coming to violently break down an area of value, which they did, markets bandaged that area, right? So there's a bigger demand, which is actually so much more confusing. So let's start to drill down. On the 12 time frame, I'm going to narrow it down like this. I don't mind the imbalance. It's not the best. But please be mindful. Look at the consolidation on top of your area, right? This is a PCP at the top, right? So it's a downward price continuation pattern, right? So markets are what pattern? Downward pattern. Let's go to the H1 time frame. Yeah, okay, cool. That's perfect for me. Let's just give me a second to remove all the stuff and then move away from the brush. Right, so from the one hour time frame, I'll, I, I might want to risk money here. Like that. From the one hour time frame, I might want to risk money there. But if I get a good level that I'm very happy with, then I will. Right, so 32,800 is the magic number. But got to be very juiced up for this trade. All right, got to be very juiced up, good account or very small risk uh, for this particular trade. You can allow for 25 to 30 points. It gives you about 17 right so most of you are going to go in tight you know holding there right so 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 so, the, so that's a risky play and if it does work then just ignore all this noise here and that's your target update if it does work right but right now like i said guys sentiment is governing this coming week sentiment around rates sentiment around data for rates right there's nothing more that is going to happen in the market except for that. You can see there's not a lot of strong US news dropping this week, right? We will literally just Euro on Thursday, um, um, CAD, 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 and then CPI Friday, right? So you're gonna see big moves Friday for, 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 these, current, for, for, for these US uh, uh, assets, right? And then the new index, it's not really new, I've done it once or twice on the channel, but I do want us to, to slowly start to grow a relationship with the, the Australian index, the top 200 companies, the Aussie. And it depends on your broker, right? So one broker of mine still is as AU200, all right? The Australian 200, there you go, or AU200, AUD, right? And other brokers have this actually SPI or something like that, like SPI200. 
I don't know if trade will have it like that, but it's there somewhere on your broker. If you have a very good broker, um, you'll find it, right? So I want to look at, and this is the Australian index, right? It's, it's literally the the Nasdaq version of of Australia, um, um, and I, it's a nice thing to slowly start to master. And the reason for that is um, the things that will heavily impact your U.S. equities markets, your stock markets, your blah 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 markets. Those particular things, generally speaking, um, will not will not affect a U.S. two hundred, and this is like a global issue, right? which means you can hedge yourself. So I spoke about this, I gave out a signal a, a while back. Um, you, you can ask now and check, you'll see how many people actually ever took it, right? But we had a limit order here a while back and that limit order is doing quite well. Um, and now we are just waiting to see what to do. But I, I, I wanna break this whole chart down. Let's just remove all my markets from the previous thing. And then I, I want us to kind of like see where the next plays are, right? So this is, the same, same like Nasdaq, same like, you know, most of your indices, most indices start off with a strong buy profile asset, right? You will, you will do well to do a scenario analysis. So start off with level one, the one I taught on Friday. And then if I decide to be nice and kind, I'll teach you the next stage of scenario analysis here. But if not, it'll definitely be taught in the course for module three, right? So we've got our, 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 our all time high here, right? So there was a drop the 2007 2008 crash we know that this index suffered globally like everything else but is it, is it a coincidence i mean those of you who believe in coincidence that <laughs> that in 2008 you have a bank in the creative crisis crash and when this market gets to the exact same point as where it crashed in 2008 it's not going to crash for COVID. same place same place Sa same place coincidence I, 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 I genuinely admire people who live that life of coincidence. I admire people who are who believe ignorance is bliss. I, I, I you know, I, the, when you start to understand financial markets, you start to realize how much of our lives are planned by the top one percent of the top five percent in the world. And if you follow this Indian billionaire, um, I've forgotten his name, but he's in America, he's a hedge fund manager. He believes that there's a total of 150 people, men, around the world. And, and, and you'll see it across all markets. You will see the coordination across all markets. But I don't want to get into that right now. Anyways, so this COVID levels, price fell, really fell, right? Really, 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 really fell. Now, this is what I'm trying to teach you. NASDAQ, S&P 500, US 30 are all in bear market. What's bear market? A 20% drop from your previous high. Look at this thing. It's just consolidating. It's consolidating, it's minding its own business, it's creating a range market. This is where support and resistance traders can party for now because it's just consolidating. It's not crashing, it's not crashing like the US market, it's consolidating. So you come and hedge some of your money here if you know how to trade the stuff correctly. If you can't keep up with the sentiment and you want something that's just steady, moving at a steady pace, as long as there's no bad news about China. AU200 will do well. AU200 or the Australian market is very much linked to the China market, right? So if, if Chinese is doing okay, I know there's some COVID stuff right now, but it's not something that they haven't dealt with before. I'm talking about some new crazy data. It will do well, right? So now on the weekly time frame, we've mapped out a governing demand. We want to see what's going on up here. So up here, we had a supply, a supply that's overworked, an overworked supply. An overworked supply, folks, has a high chance of breaking the next time markets make co contact all right and the real reason for that is there is no money there are no sellers they're done right they sold they sold ah, this is broken this is broken i apologize might be time for me to get those spectacles so there you go oh wait let's draw it properly drawing our areas of yeah yeah, yeah still broken it's still broken who Who's fooling you? There we go. It's broken, right? Done. So there's no supply. Well, there is, but this is not the supply, right? So let's draw the correct supply. This is the work, by the way, traders. This is the work. I say this all the time. Soldiers go to war, they carry guns. Miners carry tools, and they dig. Traders analyze charts. You're not spending time analyzing charts, you're wasting your time. You're not spending time analyzing charts, you are just wasting your time. Right, so let's say this is a bandage supply, 
All right, which now exists there, and markets are now clearly, clearly gravitating towards the supply, right? Leaving, leaving something, leaving a demand somewhere. Don't know where, right? There's this demand here that markets come back to here, then markets do something here. They just kind of like hang, right? There's multiple rejections imply hidden demand. We can find out on the daily time frame and H4 time frame where these hidden demands come from. A bullish engulfing pattern is created here, but this wick goes lower, breaking this, right? Is there another demand at play? We shall see. But markets could sell off there, number one. But number two, there's a lot of clustered buying power there, all right? So it's that simple. You remember in the previous AU200 sell signal, there's a sell signal, right, um, um, that I gave you a while back on the channel, right? So this is what we have now on the daily time frame. Time to make some off stock. I like this. It's clean. Tighten the area of value. You get a strong daily supply and then you get you know a, a nice fib level fib level based on the first um um um, um anti anti fib how do we draw her we need a swing low right that's anti fib swing low swing high this is a, sorry swing low is here swing high is up there right so this is it this is what i'm talking about that right then you draw a fibonacci and you just make some 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 suggestions so look at price price then stops immediately at the PCP level, 0.38% is PCP. This and 23%. What's PCP? Price continuation pattern. Remember on Sundays, I'm here to give signals, not to teach. You want to learn? There is a link in the description. The link is always on discount. That's what it feels like right now because I'm so tired of just changing this thing up and down. The discount is, guys, as soon as we all go live, I promise you, you're going to regret not taking the stuff at a bargain. Right, you register, you, you're given about 72 hours to, to honor your word, right? Just in case you're scared that the link is going to be removed. And it will be this week, like I've said many times, many, many times. Right, so there, there you go. You've got this whole scenario here where price drops, ranges, and then because it is a PCP level, PCPs means price is going to continue in the original pattern, but the original pattern is downtrend. Whoopa! Price continues down, right? And then you start to get your, your changes, 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 right? So bullish engulfing pattern makes a demand, another demand, flat demand, right? I wouldn't trade most of these. I'd only trade this one because it meets all the rules. But you've got a Talitha area, but sometimes we're close to the upside. But another bullish engulfing pattern somewhere in there, right? But I, I'm just taking too much time on this chart, right? So point is there's some type of upward momentum going on right now on this chart be something to be very mindful of i i really have no interest in taking any of these late buys if i was a buyer i should have taken a buy there all right so we'll be looking to see what happens here on this index right and remember selling indexes actually carries slightly more risk than usual unless during a crisis and during a crisis right so otherwise indices are generally buy profile assets so you want to be buying them but when you say that and you see what people are doing at Nasdaq. When people ignore what the governor is doing, what the broader long-term picture is, you don't just buy because it's a buy profile asset. I am simply saying it has a much more disposition. It leans towards buying more than selling, but please be aware of the climate change. Right, if markets were to come back down to these levels, maybe I'll consider buying again. Oh, no, for me, not again. Buying for the first time, sorry. Markets were to come back down here, sure, I'll consider buying for the first time, but I'm not going to buy anywhere anything down here. I'm going to wait to see if I can get a reaction somewhere here, right, from this. So price gets up here and then starts to drop and then maybe this. That's what I'm going to wait for. If I don't get it, it's fine. I'm just going to keep updating myself with where this chart is. Um, and then obviously, this is an Australian index chart. So if you really want to maximize on your day trading, uh, this is not for day traders. Then, unfortunately, if you're in Africa, you need to be one of those people who are up at midnight, right? Check the time zone of the session. The, 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 the Asian session is when this index really makes a lot of moves. Right, next chart, crude oil. Spoke about crude oil last week. I would know. Drew these areas for you. I said high risk, cowboy. Wait for something imbalance market came gave us an imbalance on thursday market started to explode to the upside simple clean trade you know 
and it was it's only high risk you know i i i, I, I didn't make it great because i knew it was going to be an, a, a, a rule based trade it's only high risk because there was a lower demand all right and i know that markets love buying low so i wrote here safer but what are the chances? I remember doing this with you guys. I said, what are the chances oil comes to below 100? Because really, for this demand to work, you want oil at about 102. You know, H1, H4 demands would bring it down at 99 something, you know? What are the chances that oil comes below 100? Possible with governing supply, but just be mindful, this can still start rallying and leave us behind. So if you're waiting to buy here, it started to rally and leaving us behind, right? So then I say to you guys in this video, I'm gonna have an entry here, low risk, and I'm gonna have another pending order then, right? And then it was, so I noticed it triggered, blah, blah, blah. Let's take some profits here, guys, because we don't know what's gonna happen. We do know it's a supply, but we don't really believe. Deep down in my heart, I don't believe the supply is gonna stop price. Um, I, it might stop this current trade we're in, that's why I'm saying take, take profits. But I'm saying I don't believe this is going to end the rally, the, the, the long-term upgrade. Right? Like I say, I've got call options at about 150. I think I think we'll eventually get there. Right? Oil is literally not showing any type of signs of slowing down, and the war isn't helping. Right? So so just be mindful. So if you just go into this trade right now, you're too close to a supply to want to swing it till kingdom come. Make your money, close the trades, and then kind of like regroup. Right? Markets are actually very very much a, a, a new fresh uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, setting territory right as, as of monday markets are opening into this area so so just be very mindful right you should be breaking even by the way if you haven't taken profits and if you want to see it make it all the way up there do that with price haven't broken even right so that's us oil there is no other trade idea to give you right now if you want to sell it sell at your own risk if you want to buy after this area has done its job, then we're going to have to wait for a buy down here. Excuse me. And you already know I've already got a, a, a pending order there. Right. So that's done. USDJPY, running out of time. And we are now on asset number 10. So that's good. Six more to go. Six more to go. If you're still here, you're still watching, and this is helping you in any way, please, please like the video. I don't mind taking a 10. A five second pause for you to like the video. If you just realize that you are not yet subscribed, please do feel free to subscribe. It really helps the channel. The channel is not monetized. I'm not getting paid by YouTube to make these videos. It helps me reach people. That's the goal. That's the goal. So if you're one of those people I've reached and you it has helped you help me reach more people, please, 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 please. Right. USDJPY, my people, was one of the first charts where I introduced monetary policy diversion. And it was all the way there where I said we are going to the moon. This was the moon back then. <laughs> right. And this chart has reintroduced us to many other moons, higher moons. Look at the governor. Look at it. Look, look, look what's, what's going on here. Look what's going on here. Look what's going on here. And I told you, JPY might change its plan in October. And then we also know that FOMC might have another interest rate hike for the next three to four months uh, up until September, October. So until then, this chart is maximizing on all of that, right? Look at that, a whole new strong demand area outside of supply, and we all know the game. We know what this means, and this is the candlestick of June. Today is the 1st of June. No, sorry, the 5th of June. And the 5th of June, the monthly candlestick is already this big, all right? So anything can go, we never judge a candlestick um, um, until it's closed. So we have to wait until June to see what's gonna happen, but if this stays as a bullish engulfing pattern, then you know, then, then, then the supply is in trouble because what's been locked and loaded in this area is just a big confirmation that the supply here is in trouble, right? So, so, so look out for for this, and that'll be a very good end of year target uh, for this chart, right? So this is one of those things, guys. Once again, when you want to find a good buy position, look at how parabolic price has been. I mean, I still have a pen in order here, which I just it's expired now. I need to delete this one. Because, you know, markets have drastically moved up ever since me waiting for markets to come back down to me, right? And, and this is despite the dollar weakening. Remember, we're talking about a weak dollar, uh, a dollar falling. And I told that the dollar is just falling in the short term in the midst of a strong dollar rally. And a chart like this paints that picture so, so clear. Look at this incredible imbalance. Yes, we can leave this one there. 
in the event of a major correction, right? So this is now what we are going to wait for. And I need to make that same adjustment in my trading plan. I need to, I, I know I have a pin in order here, but I just need to delete this one so that I don't have, you know, unnecessary levels on my on my own, uh, 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 I guess, order book, right? So, but but now, you know, in the absence of price dropping that low, right, we need to be aware that on the weekly time frame, inside what's what now seems to be the making of a governing time frame, but we're gonna wait until that big green candle is done on thirty something June, thirty June or thirty first of June, right? The weekly is is done, right? So weekly has given us a governing a, a, a demand, a weekly demand. Well, weekly, the mayoral time frame. Is saying, look, man, I get you waiting for the for, for the governor, but here's a nice time frame. But in the daily time frame, look at this. It's just like it's like Oprah is in the house and she's just distributing demands, demands and demands. Everybody gets a demand. I'm gonna go with Kinihashi. All these trades that we're marking out now are high risk because we are now unfortunately higher and higher into the fold. And you know, you never wanna buy high. Okay, so. Have clear targets. You can see the one that happened on Friday is not a good call. Right. The one that happened on Friday is not a good call. I would never take this trade right now unless if the supply was removed. I repeat, I would only take the daily sub daily demand, this one here, if the supply was moved. But definitely, definitely, definitely. This is a good trade. So this is a good place rather to risk your money. All right. So I'm gonna be putting a pin in order here on USD JPY and then wish wish for the best. Right. So I, I would need like dollar to slow down a little bit or at least JPY to retrace something, right? Something to bring me there. This for me, you can use it if you want, but just know a high risk. Not just like me saying high risk because it's close, but just high risk to a point where it's marked red. All right. It might work, it might not work. I have no interest in it. Right. But um, um if this breaks then this makes this whole area even more exciting right so i might increase some lots there okay and and if this works i i now have enough move between the 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 the, the particular um uh, supply and the demand to get at least one is to three which means i can then have a three three entry system right the one we've been discussing so entry number one would be halfway through between the two so that i can cover what it is that i'm risking in the market Entry number two would be all the way to this target here, which is a one is to four. Entry number three, break even, praying to make it all the way up there, all right? So, so that would be, you know, what's going on um, um, for me in USD JPY. Told you, don't say I didn't tell you, I told you. AUD USD, right? So this, I actually collected, I don't know which cluster it was in, but I collected a couple of stop loss hits from AUD USD earlier on this year um earlier on oh look i, I look before i remove stuff remember i say this is going to be removed and markets are going to make their way all the way up there well look that's exactly what's happening this has now been removed and markets uh after removing it with a red day on friday but markets are going to slowly make their way up there why is this going up because remember the dollar temporarily is going down and then i said we're going to look for some interesting plays up here on the supply right so selling up there doing nothing in the moment selling up here doing nothing in the moment right two supplies this fails i'm taking there if this fails does my account explode no because i'm risk woke right i, I i'm applying risk management right i'm supposed to lose money along the way but when i make money i'm supposed to cover all my losses and more that's, that's kind of like how it works trading in a game of probabilities right so while we, we while the dollar the euro all risk sensitive assets take advantage of a falling dollar this is what we're looking at right so not much new to give you on AUD usd but just to re-emphasize our previous levels swiss franc jpy higher supply there's something i just i'm just sorry just remember i think someone in the public telegram group asked me to look at euro jpy and i was asking for a warm for it so i just remembered now please note this was one of the first assets i did um i just don't know if it was timothy or someone else i apologize i don't even remember what i said when i was going to do it but there we go i've done it now right now remember monetary policy divergence for most of these assets right for most of these assets which means swissy goes up 
JPY equals down, which is Swiss means is stronger than JPY who's currently weak. That's number one. Number two, well, when an asset surpasses the bodies of, I want to say, all time highs, and it is an all time high, right? Well, well, well there's nothing. One, once you break above, and now all you're doing is filling the wick, right? And you can see this asset is doing a very good job of filling the wick. Then, then you know that there'll be supplies across the our timelines, like, you know, weekly, daily, H4, but for the most part, markets want to get to the top. Somewhere in this week is a daily supply, wherever price is going. But the point is, this is, this is remarkably powerful. If for whatever reasons, markets break the all time high and start to head down, it's gonna be a very beautiful place to buy and a very good sell to take since governors will be you know, a little bit uh, mixed. There'll be no governing supply because we're now in new territory all time high, but governing demand will need assistance all the way down here, right? So this will be something to look to sell at some point in time and definitely something to buy in the long run at some point in time, right? So let's now, start to do a slow, uh, small, uh, 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 multiple time frame breakdown, multiple time frame analysis, so to speak. Just excuse me there. I'm deleting these arrows. Seemingly they did not work out. So I wanna just quickly clear the chart and see what's going on. Right, so I'm extending that demand that we saw earlier on on the governing time frame, right, which is going to be this big. Okay, clean imbalance, markets came down, right. Now let's draw a, a bullish Fibonacci to see what happened here. Right, so markets, Fib would have been drawn there, markets come into our golden ratio. We're just doing this to get that confidence that, damn, our tools work, our areas of value work, we can make sense of price, right. So we know this is a good play, right. So markets come in. We're gonna see if there was a demand to take and then markets on the daily time frame continue. All right, so you see bullish and golfing gets a test, price goes. So we, we could have entered that, but I was not in it. Right, nothing on the left. So this makes this a original turn, beautiful. Right, so markets are on their way up, clean imbalance, but yet smoked, right? Smoked, 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 interesting, uh, but it is. It fits the, the, the asset right now. The asset right now, Swiss franc is rallying very hard against JPY. So obviously they're going to push it up. So that's fine. Makes sense, right? And then there's another supply here, which I'm pretty sure by the end of this coming week might actually just be taken up, right? The highest supply. It was actually silly in hindsight to even bother trying to risk here. So I'm pretty sure this might also be taken out. Um, and then on the daily time frame, this is now for a continuation pattern. This is now officially attractive. I find this quite attractive. Now there's, there's enough room to move up. There's so much room. You can get a good one is to three on the trade. And, and that's for me, remember, that's all I care about. I care about my risk reward ratio, all right? So I wanna see a couple of things happen this week. First, take this out by Monday, Tuesday. And then if you wanna come back for me, come back for me and we'll go up together. I'll fight through through whatever is up there with you, right? My profit targets would be simple, right? First profit target would be my one is to three, which I'm pretty sure is gonna be by where, you know, price roughly is right now. Right, so price right now is up to around about a one is to four, right? So somewhere there. So 50%, one is to three, and then third entry, break even, so let's rock and roll. All right, so that's pound Swiss franc. Uh, I don't think the supply is gonna hold. Let's find a real target. Remember, all of this in the yellow is a wick on the governing time frame. It is not a stable place for, 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 for price. Price now is just for filling it, it's long-term, you know, journey to the upside. Uh, no. Okay, so this is the only real supply here. You need these highs to navigate the multiple, the, 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 the major turning point or the, or the new high, right? Or so where your stop loss should be, but the real supply is here. But you need these highs. But the real supply is here, but you need these highs, all right? 
So, so, so that's what price is kind of like playing at right now, right? But this works, fresh touch, right? And if, 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 if markets break it or exhaust it and fall back there, then, you know, this would be a very good place to, to try again. And then, you know, as you go back down, 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 you can keep checking. But we'll, we'll do that next week if, we, if it gets to that, right? So, Cat Swiss Frank. Cowboy area marked out in the last war room. It's marked out in red. Markets chose the slower demand there. If you do that, you can see how markets came into that area. We had a Fibonacci to just give us confidence, right? I, I definitely am not in this trade because it's, it's marked in red. Um, I, I, I try and take some cowboys, but some of them, most of them I don't. Um, but look, it's beautiful. Worked out. Right, lower demand. And it only worked out because once again, we already had a golden fib letting us know that it could be could be well worth the risk clear right you take the trade right you just trust the process but markets sought out not this but a lower demand and yeah markets ready up so if you're in this shout out to you you're making money by yourself without me that's all good um number one number two i hate this market right i've just explained this before the stupid multi multi-year ranges are extremely exhausting when markets broke out to the downside, it was my assumption that markets were going to continue going to the downside. Markets went to the downside. Now they're going up. So for me, it's like, ugh, I'm not, I, I, I look at it because someone will bring it up once in a while. But I, I really have zero interest in trading this, this market. But if things go well and the rally continues to the up and up and up, then this could be one of the first main targets for, for CAD's just frank, right? And remember, CAD will always do well as long as oil is doing well and oil seems to be doing well, which is why the rest of the world is doing terrible, right? NZDJPY, second last asset of the day or evening at this point, right? Clean break, remember earlier on, we looked at NZDUSD, you can see very similar setups, 2020 COVID demand, break of market structure demand, right? The other one that we looked at, NZDUSD, there was a, a, a break of structure, but remember, monetary policy divergence and the versus the japanese yen japanese yen maintaining a weak yen qe dollar nzd probably facilitating some strength right i can't imagine anyone who's not taking inflation and recession seriously in the economy all right so we can see let's go to daily cowboy area ripped to shreds good 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 I tell you about these things, take them seriously. Some of them work, some of them don't. But there we go, valid order block running. Um, but yeah, I, I'm most likely going to close this trade here, by the way. Although I, I was talking to someone on Friday or Thursday on the floor, and, and they, they've got a thesis, right? So all my traders, by the way, have to mark out thesis for swing to positional trades. And the thesis is just a basic argument. I really want you to argue and explain to me why you think price is going to go up and after some research. And it makes sense. Long story short, there's a better supply up here. So the, 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 the five minute debate we had was why am I going to close there when I can still hold price a little bit longer? And I, and I completely agree with that. And, and one of the reasons why I am this season in this market, by the way, and that's going to be now up until the beginning of summer markets in July, in, in the summer markets for America, anyways, um, is I want to I wanna get my one is to three, one is to four in all access, and then keep it in case I need to make big withdrawals, right? So I've been making withdrawals systematically in two accounts right now. Uh, it was my little girl's birthday on the 26th of May, so she had to get some crypto, right? She turned two, so she got two bitcoins, um, and, and I'm praying. You know, it, it was my assumption at the beginning of the year that Bitcoin would be at about 20K by now, right? So I feel like I bought Bitcoin as still at a premium. Um, um, and I still dollar cost average, but for birthdays for the kids, we, we really want to try and buy, if we can afford it, buy a full coin. So I, I want to build up capital, right? Because I, I'll end with crypto in today's world. I, 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 the crypto bear market is nowhere close to being over. I don't care what other people are saying. I'm telling you, facts on facts. So cash is king for me. Cash is king. I don't want to keep too much cash. For, you know, you know. So I take profits, take good trades, take profits, take good trades, take profits. Systematically start withdrawing uh, um, um, and, and buying assets. That's what everyone should be doing. 
have a good strategy. If you know how to use it, use it to make money. Use that money to buy your assets that you could not afford at some point in time in your life, right? So once again, uh, on the floor, most of my traders are going to be you know holding up until then. I I I, I want to free up some margin and see how that goes, right? Um, the cowboy area, you got Brent, no one cares. We have this beautiful area where we tick there, and I'll be taking profits there. If markets get here this week, which is very likely, right? And you do decide to sell, just know you're selling still in slightly bullish tone and make sure you get out of there. I might put a pin in order here for this to continue to the upside, right? To, to kind of like match uh, uh, one of my traders thesis ideas, but I definitely will be taking profits here, right? Cash is king, just before cash is king right now. Uh, uh, and then uh, let's end it with natural gas. So instead of say we're going to look at natural gas and then I will talk Bitcoin for three seconds. Not much to say about Bitcoin, right? So natural gas, guys, is one of those things that is just, that's next. Yeah. If I removed it from my watch list, oh, oh, it's gone. All right. So I would love to get back into this market. Uh, I, the, one of the reasons why I haven't, to be honest with you, is because I've just been focused on oil. I've been getting into oil as much as I can, but natural gas is equally as affected as the oil market. Um, um, and we've got a little bit of institutional selling here, not too crazy about it, right? After breaking a supply, right? And, and this is going to happen, right? Or as long as oil and, and, and war and Russia, right? This is going up, this is going up, going up, going up. Right now I'm talking to you and my whole office is super warm and so my gas heater, right? But the price of these basic things is going up basic stuff. If you're in Africa, you want to really think about your local economy, go check the price of paraffin. Compare the price of paraffin three months ago, price of paraffin a year ago, and just use a five liter uh, comparison in price. You'll be surprised, right? So so when they do this, which they did, they've broken a supply. It doesn't matter how much selling happens now. They've broken a governing supply. They've literally just, you know, you know, declared war to, to, to price ever dropping anytime soon. Then, then, then we need to look to the heavens, right? So the next big target for natural gas is here. And what I want to do is to be awake now to allow for hopefully price to give me a, a, a lead into, 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 into the market, like a, a buy, a buy lead, like to, to try and kind of like get back in there. Right, so I've got a couple of areas marked out already on the charts, but this was a long time ago when I was trading this thing actively. I am no longer in it. And I regret. Let's just quickly. Um, let's just quickly. I don't want to compare it to anything. Sorry, I just want to add uh, natural gas to my watch list because uh, then I look at my watch list every day. Uh, before I go around looking for new money, I make sure I've mastered old money, right? The stuff that we we are talking about a lot, right? So natural gas is now in the watch list, and and this is really like a crazy prayer, right? hoping that markets come all the way down here in the current sentiment is a little bit ridiculous, right? And I'm very honest and open about that, right? So be careful for technical hacks. For example, what this week here could later on be used as a good place for price to move to the upside. Let's see. So you can see there was a little bit of play in this whole weird zone here, right? So we're going to do some multiple time analysis and see if we can get confirmation. See there? Markets bounced off this. It's a retail trading area never to be trusted but something to be very much aware of mark this green that's that governing demand that we saw earlier on i'll just show it to you one more time there i'm gonna go akini hashi just so i can you know save on time weekly i'm gonna tighten this up a little bit Uh, looking left on the weekly time frame. All right, so these are the supplies that have been taken out by price one, two, no longer exist. And after that, it's clean. It's a clean run, right? So the question is, how far will price fall? And the falling is a retracement, not even like a, a reversal, right? So we, we, if if we had a a, a a a um um you know some type of uh, a moment to draw the Fibonacci. We might on the day we'll have a look here, but right now it's a little tricky, right? But if we, if we go with what we what the Fibonacci is telling us right now, then you know there's something cooking in this area, 
yeah, we'll see what we, what the daily time frame says. But maybe personally, I'd need another red candle so I can really draw a, a, a comprehensive uh, Fibonacci that I can trust. Right? Because it's something I can get. Right. Let's go to daily, and then let's go to Akinihashi first, and then we'll see from there. All right. So all these areas have been used. Okay. So there's, there's no more demands at the top for us to rely on. All right. The first demand, according to our Fibonacci, right now. All right. I'm going to go Akinihashi first, and then you guys will see for yourself. So the first demand that we are looking at is here. All right, so I, I will take a buy there. I won't lie. I'll, I'll definitely take a risk there. Right, will price come down there for me? I don't know, but I do know that I'm not a robot. I'm not a trading robot, so I'll never be prepared for all the trades all the time. So I'm going to sit and forget, get my risk management right, and then sit and forget, right? If this demand breaks, then I'll come set some pinning orders down here at some point in time. But right now, I'm going to focus on here, right? So just extend this a little bit. Make sure you cover complicated to strike series where we've got a nice bullish engulfing pattern we want these areas to break once they break then yeah natural gas might come to us and ladies and gentlemen we've made it to the end of our war room, war room number 70 70 sunday's doing this i appreciate you i'm just gonna pull out bitcoin for you because i said i would i don't know why i promised that look at your bitcoin look at your boy look at your boy look at your boy right just messing around with you messing around with you i give it to take it right um, um, even the JP Morgan trade pool is struggling right now to get back up there, right? So Bitcoin, I was in a buy earlier on, broke even on the, on the last trade. So price took me out on zero, made a little bit money on one of the short-term buys turned just before this turn. And we explained why in the public telegram group, uh, and in terms of this order block, right? One could do this right, right now and say, well, Leroy, there's still some buying to happen at about. 29231 and the answer is it's already happened right so, so we're already in those buys but our areas of values were drawn a little bit higher right that's already happened there all right and then markets did a, an, an original turn there all right so just be very careful now but now there's there's a very psychology there right so even if there's a pump up it might come back down right and and like i'm not going to waste your time with bitcoin you know me you know what i want you know what i've said i see um 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 no no devil in hell is going to me otherwise they want to pump bitcoin to 100k before it comes down to 20 that's fine that's fine you, you do that you do that guys but it doesn't change the fact that bitcoin needs to come to 20. It doesn't change the fact that when bitcoin comes to 20 it's not even it's not even an attractive place for institutional sale uh, 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 buying the attractive place is 12,000. and i know i look crazy and i might even lose subscribers for saying that but you'll be back you will be back by the end of this year if we make content down here right 365 everybody shake my hand man thank you for being a part of this don't forget the stuff this is important put in the hours some of you are putting the hours doing the wrong thing so get the right thing first get my course learn the right thing and then put in the hours put in the hours the stuff pays you well pays you better than any dream job i i, I honestly am a, a proponent for the market but if you do it correctly you will have the best trading days of your life and you know, a good life to live, right? Money, money does govern the world. So let's not pretend, right? Um, I've had fun with you. I'll see you during this week. Uh, three, six, five, shake my hand. I'm out. Peace.